Hola ladies and gentlemen, como estas? Hope you guys are all doing well. Welcome back to another video of the van conversion. So uh, just to give you guys a bit of an update, I have decided to upgrade things slightly. If you saw the last video, then I actually started the bed frame, got it all working nicely. However, after a day's sleep on it, I decided I want to redo the bed frame. So I will show you what I've done now. So this is the new bed frame, which I built yesterday and it's far better. The wood is now two by two strong timber. I also put a few more screws in, some wood glue as well, and uh, a bit more support down the middle. And the main differences really are now on the previous structure, it had a bit of two by two going across here, which meant I couldn't slide things in and out. So I removed that, which now means, you know, it's more accessible from the back. And also exactly the same thing on the sides. So now I can get things from the side once the bed is on. I put this bit in just to make it a bit stronger because this is where most of the weight will be. This was the original structure. And as you can see, you know, the wood was already cracking when I was screwing in uh, some of the wood. I mean, it looks fairly fine and it would have done the job, absolutely. But this is what I meant. I wouldn't have been able to get anything from the sides or down the back. So I decided to completely redo it and uh, definitely a much better job with stronger wood. And yeah, just more accessibility from the sides and the backs. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just bolt these three pieces of the bed together so that then obviously they don't move or well I need them to tilt up and down but they don't you know separate so I'll get that bolted up and then I need to actually mount the bed frame to the car because the bed frame doesn't want to move only the actual slats and stuff like that <laughs> Tricky bit is out the way, so now the bed frame should just slide up and down. Let's give us a look. Lovely, look at that. I put some wax on it. Definitely slides a bit easier. Oh, this, ouch. Just gotta be careful you don't get your fingers trapped. Okay, so I don't know how well you can see this, but there's a metal clip right here and I want to drill through that and then attach one of these because this will stop the frame from moving, which will make moving the bed, you know, into position a lot easier. And it means just that the bed won't move. So we're smoking. How straight was that? Oh God got it in this one so that's gonna hook onto this and then also the same for this one so this should stop the bed moving I just need to put a nut on either end to stop it uh, that is not going anywhere look at that fish bash Bosh, solid. The only thing to do now is just cut these ends off. And then the bed is nice and secure. <sighs> Job done. So now according to my calculations, the bed should move in and out. That's good. Nice and smoothly. Lovely, jubbly, and the bed frame is all sturdy. Time to get the mattress on, don't you think? Woo hoo hoo! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! This is the life. Very, very happy with how this is turning out so far.
Very simple, but that now does the job. Look, now the bed cannot go back. So when I want to sit out and look at the ocean, lovely, I can lean back, perfect, works a treat. So the Amazon delivery just came. Yeah, the anti-skid pads, which I'm gonna put on the bottom. Some fabric glue for the windows and the curtains. The LED lights, which got stolen the other day. Heavy duty stick on the Velcro adhesive. And then this is what I'm gonna use for the windows some self-reflective insulation. You stick it on the windows, make it look nice and neat, and then that should bounce the sun off to keep the car nice and cool. <clears throat> Two hours later, we finally managed to get the top box on, and this is gonna be great for storage. 400 litres this is. Bam! And now I have space for so much more stuff. I can put chairs, tables. Can you hear the echo? Hello, hello! So this is gonna be very, very useful. And let me show you what else I also installed. Kind of, didn't really install it, but just stuck it to the wood. You won't be able to see it very well. Hold on. LEDs, here's my remote. I bought these on Amazon, they just power to a USB. So uh, eventually I'll have a, uh, you know, a USB adapter for this uh, cigarette socket. But at the moment, just for testing purposes, I've got my charger here. Is that on? Yeah. And now we have lights. Hopefully you can see that. All underneath. So it's gonna be like the red light district and this is where all the magic will not happen, most likely. <laughs> I was thinking I could obviously get the, um, the LED lights that change to different colors, but to be honest, I think it looks a bit tacky like that. So I'd rather just keep it white and simple. And then, you know, it looks quite nice. The reason it's under the bed is because I'm just doing it for aesthetics, really. I'm not doing it to get light in this main area. I just thought it might look quite nice under the bed so obviously we'll be able to really see the full effect of that when it gets dark and when the whole storage is in so we're getting there now the main thing is for the car to actually work and pass the MOT but I'm waiting for uh, the garage to come back to me on that anyway I'll catch you tomorrow for another day of the conversion right guys how are we all doing I decided today that while I'm still waiting for a few Amazon deliveries to arrive so I can actually get on with the windows I want to cut the mattress down to size because at the moment you know it's kind of sitting up on the sides as the car gets narrower at the back so what I've done so far is just unzip the cover from the mattress so now the foam is exposed and I'm just gonna mark it with a pen where I need to cut and then yeah get it cut and hopefully it should fit in nicely so on the other mattress which I've got a memory foam one it's a bit thicker it's that yellow one which you've probably seen I'll show you after anyway I was using this and this is like a, uh, a plasterboard knife cutter and it hasn't done the best job because it's so rigid and jaggedy so the cuts aren't smooth so for this mattress which is a lot thinner I'm just going to use a Stanley knife and trim the edges I saw a video on YouTube of a guy using one of those electric carving knives that you use for Christmas or a roast chicken on a Sunday I don't have one but that would be the best thing to do Maybe a standing knife isn't the best thing to use. Right, one side done. Definitely not the prettiest, but at least I'll be able to sort of push it down on the side, so it should be fine. Okay, so what I've just done is cut the outside layer of the I don't know what the hell you call it duvet cover but it's not a duvet cover just because I don't want these extra pieces which I've cut off to sort of just lie around just getting wedged in the corner so I thought I'll cut them off and I've still got this top piece to go on top so I might just glue down with some fabric glue 
these edges just to stop it popping out. Scissors, by the way, has been by far the easiest way to cut through this, so I would recommend using scissors over anything. This is just Su Glue liquid, by the way. Never used it. Don't know how well it's gonna work on here. There's only one way to find out. Oh, it really stinks, that glue. Right, I've just sewed up the mattress, or not sewed it, glued it. Looks pretty good around that corner. This one, not so good. Now to put the next cover on top. So hopefully now we'll get this in the car and it should fit much better and not lift up on the sides. This was the other one that I just cut, by the way, with the other knife. You can see it's a bit jaggedy, but it fits, so that's fine. And I'll plop that one I just cut straight on top. Whew, it's in. Looking much, much nicer. Now, because I cut this off here, I can tuck this down here, so it's not as tight and it doesn't sit up as right. So, there we go can tuck that in because before it was like coming up here so definitely looks better these are the moments I've been dreaming of for so many years just to sit back in my own converted van with some amazing views ahead of me <laughs> or not oh I can't wait okay so the next job is going to be making some blackout window covers. I don't have all the materials I need today, but I can at least make a start and yeah, cut out the window frames from this reflective, from this reflective insulation material. So we'll start on that. So this is what I'm using, SF40 thermal insulation. I got it on Amazon. Other people from YouTube videos look like they've made it from this stuff. So eventually when I get the right materials, I'll put one side black and the other side a different color to go on the inside. Oh. Bloody hell, not easy this. So, I've just cut out the window shape, now it's time to cut it out. I will cut it a lot bigger, just because obviously if it's too small then I've wasted a sheet of this. So always cut bigger, and then you can cut it smaller after. That is not bad at all. I've maybe cut it a little bit too small up there, but once I put some fabric on that, that should work perfectly. Not bad. It makes a huge difference as well, obviously, to the amount of light that's being let in and the amount of heat as well. So hopefully these should work out pretty good. I want to shoot myself in the head. I've just done two of the window covers and didn't take into consideration that the sides that I've done will actually be the inside of the car. When actually I want this to be the outside and it's probably taken me about two and a half hours to do two of them so far. And now I've wasted this black material, I've wasted the foil and half of the glue because now these won't fit the right way around on the side of the window that they need to be. So I'm just looking back through one of the videos that I just made 
to double check. And yeah, I'm just trying to look at the window. And see, and I've definitely done the first two on the wrong side. So I've just wasted so much time and so much materials. <laughs> right guys, it's been a while since I've come down and done any work on the van just because I had some other stuff going on. But as you can see, finally, I have the two back window covers on. This is actually made from Hessian material, or not made. The outer layer is made from Hessian, and then on the other side, it is blackout material. I made these myself. I didn't record everything because it took me a while to, uh, to get this done over the last few days, but finally, we're there. And I'm quite happy with it. I think they look quite good. So the next step, which I've already started to do, will be to put some curtains here, uh, some curtains in the middle, and also some curtains on that window. As you can see there, I've got the Nepalese flag up there. So it adds a bit more color to the place, but I'll just show you what it looks like from the outside. So this is actually tape, which I put around the edges just to make it completely black out. There is a slight gap there, but that's fine. And then on the inside of here, I also put some uh, self-adhesive Velcro. So now it sticks to the window. So if I do want to take it off, then I can. As I said, I didn't film everything showing you guys how I made this, but if you do want to see a video on how I've done it, then uh, do let me know. I know this video was absolutely all over the place. I was doing so many different little details and jobs to the car and to the van. But uh, yeah, so it was a bit everywhere, this video. I'll end this video here, and in the next video, I will show you sort of an updated progress because there has been a lot of things that have changed within the car, but you can't actually see it right now because it's all underneath the bed but i'll save that for the next video as always guys thank you so much for watching and i shall catch you in the next video peace